Okay, go ahead. All right, perfect. So uh, I did my presentation on the Joint Commission, and in all honesty, I didn't know what it was until you know this this week. So it was really interesting to get to uh, to learn about it. Um, so let's just go ahead and dive right in. So the Joint Commission. So the first question that I answered was, what does accreditation mean? And the definition, well, we'll just say it says when it comes to healthcare, you want to know what you're receiving the best quality care. So the definition of accreditation is the action or process of officially recognizing someone as having a particular status or being qualified to perform a particular activity. So it's just a way for hospitals to make sure that they're meeting national quality standards when it comes to your care and safety. Uh, it's a big deal because like, if I thought of myself as a patient, I would want to know the hospital I was visiting uh, was up to, to par, up to standards with with uh, the gold level standard, as we'll learn about in, in the next couple slides, but that's basically what accreditation means. Um, so uh, the Joint Commission was is established by the medical professionals in 1951. Uh, it's called, the short name for it I found out was the JCAHO. That's what everybody referred to it as. I don't, is there a different, is there a way to say that? I think it's just the acronym, but uh, the Joint Commission is a national nonprofit group that accredits thousands of healthcare organizations, including some 4,500 hospitals in the United States. It was founded by Ernest Amory Codman and was founded for the purpose of continuing, continuously improving healthcare for the public in collaboration with other stakeholders by evaluating healthcare organizations and inspiring them to excel and providing safe and effective care of the highest quality and value. Um, I actually looked up a little bit more about Ernest Amory Codman. Uh, it, he was on a physician's board. He came up with this for a uh, the specific reason of making sure that there was a standard to be held um, for hospitals and healthcare. Uh, it was really interesting reading about him. Was 18, uh, 1899 was, well, I think that's when he got married, actually. But um, that was around the time he was thinking about doing this. And like I said, it was established in 1951. So that's the purpose of it. So what kinds of organizations are even eligible for the Joint Commission accreditation? So it can be earned by a lot of different types of healthcare organizations. And this is taken from the directly from the website of uh, it's the jointcommission.gov or org. And it says the organizations can include hospitals, doctor's offices, nursing homes, office-based surgery centers, behavioral health treatment facilities, and providers of home care service. It's interesting to me that it, it mentioned um, behavioral health treatment facilities. You don't really think about that sometimes when you think about a hospital, um, but the psychiatric side of things are, are also, can also be accredited, which I thought was very interesting that it was grouped in there as well. So, who are the competitors? So I thought there was just the Joint Commission, but it turns out there's some other uh, competitors as well. So for a long time, it seems the Joint Commission did not have any real competitors in regards to healthcare qualification. They were the, the main ones. However, there's a couple of competitors recently, especially that have been competing with the JCHO. None of these institutions is the College, or one of the, excuse me, is the College of American Pathologists or the CAP. Uh, there's also another one, I think it was called the CHO, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, there's another competitor I found out from Norway actually called the DNV and they're causing quite a stir. The hospitals are beginning to choose accreditation from the DNV over the G the JCAHO because of the seamless, seamless relationship with Medicare um, and uh, for a couple of reasons which we'll get into in a second but uh, at the moment it still looks like the, the Joint Commission uh, is still the top dog and they're, they're like it says the leading commission for hospital accreditation. Um, because of what they have. It's called the gold seal approval, or essentially their, their survey that they have to do. So uh, what, what percent of these are accredited by the Joint Commission? Approximately 77% of the nation's hospitals are currently accredited by the Joint Commission, and 88% of hospitals are accredited in the United States uh, by the Joint Commission as well. So quite a bit. They're, they're still quite up, up high. Um, so there's a, there's a term, it's called dean status. Uh, healthcare organizations that achieve accreditation through a joint commission dean status survey are determined to meet or exceed Medicare and Medicaid requirements. It's given out by the joint commission. It, what I thought was really interesting about this is there's two different types of dean status. Uh, one that you have to have accredita accreditation and one that you don't. So voluntary dean status is the one without a required accreditation. And it's available to, like it says, ambulatory surgical centers, clinical labs, critical access hospitals, home health agencies, hospice agencies, hospitals, and other psychiatric hospitals. And I didn't include them, but there's ones that you needed to be accredited for in order to be uh, deemed status as well. Um, but I don't have those listed, unfortunately. 
All right. So you might think to yourself, how often do I have to get accredited? Or how often does this have to go down? So according to the site, it says the surveyors visited visit accredited health organizations a minimum of once every 39 months and or it's a two years for for laboratories so they have to come by um, every basically every three years for the hospitals two years for the laboratories and evaluate the standards of compliance and it's called a survey when they do this so i believe this is let me see yeah, this is the last slide, so I'll go over it just a little bit. This is the most interesting to me. So why would you, a hospital choose an accredit, to be accredited by an organization that's different than the Joint Commission? So it made me think, it seems like it's super top dog. It seems like it's the best available. Um, it's, it has a really, it was founded in 1951. It has a strong, you know, root. Um, so why would, why would anybody choose anything else? So after studying a couple different articles about this, I came to the following conclusion. Seems that there's been a shift in attitude regarding the accreditation in the healthcare community as a whole. Uh, instead of becoming accredited, you can have a simple licensure instead or a survey by other things. Ah, there's the other um, organization. It's called the CMS, and it seems to be just fine. Um, some of the some of the required things on the survey uh, for a, for the Joint Commission is not required by the CMS or or other organizations, uh, and some hospital practices. I don't think it's necessary to have every single thing that JCAHO might have. I found an interesting quote about this by a Karen Dutcher, uh, the RN, the Vice President of Patient Care Services for Frisbee Memorial Hospital in Rochester, New Hampshire. And she says the following, we had a very successful <clears throat> JCAHO survey and we're pleased with that process. However, we became aware that many hospitals in the state of New Hampshire had made a decision to move to CMS survey. So we began talking to them and found out that they were very satisfied with the survey for a variety of reasons that did not have any negative impact on their quality of care, perception of them in the community or with the insurance payers. So I thought about that. It was really interesting. If, if you know, the people who you're treating and the general community feel that a different way of being accredited uh, can save the hospital money or time, uh, then why wouldn't you go to a different uh, organization? I, I think that it's healthy to have competition. And I think it's interesting that the JCAHO, while even noted in this this quote, uh, has super high expectations, which is good. You can also get accreditation from other uh, organizations and, and still be just fine. It's, it's no less. So that was very interesting. Um, so th those are just some of the reasons that hospitals would be choosing other organizations besides the Joint Commission for accreditation. And that was it, I believe. So awesome! Uh, good, good job, Max. That was really good. Um, you covered the topic really well. Um, so I, I mentioned this earlier, but what what was the most interesting thing that you learned as you were studying the topic? Yeah, I uh, actually enjoyed studying about it because a lot of the information came from the Joint Commission's website. Uh, right there, it's listed as jointcommission.org. But I liked mm -hmm. hearing what other people had to say about you know maybe going a different route than just the Joint Commission. It seems like it was a really, really high level of expectation um, for their surveys, which is great. And you, you might think at first glance, well, I would always want that. You know, if I'm running a, a hospital, and you got to think about the business side of things too. Uh, I want my business to look the best, have the highest accreditation, but there seems to be a lot of com competition that's coming from different places to try and, uh, you know, compete with the Joint Commission. Even though, like I, I said earlier, you know, 88% of hospitals in the United States are accredited through the Joint Commission. Other people look to different ways because, like I said, it might save them time or money, and I think that was that was really interesting that really the Joint Commission has this huge monopoly over everything, and uh, other companies are looking to see how they, they might be able to do a better job at it, so... I don't know. It'll be interesting to see in the future, in my opinion, what, what happens if the Joint Commission maybe, I don't want to say it goes lax on their surveys, but how they can react to the competition. I'm, I'm not really sure just yet. So, But it was very interesting learning about the accreditation process and uh, what it means to hospitals. It's a big deal. I mean, they have it. They're very meticulous when they go through their surveys, and, uh, and to have that gold seal of approval is, is a big deal. So. All right. Awesome. That's fantastic. Um, all right, so I'm just going to stop.